Oh anyway, how's it going? And welcome back to Mass Effect. This is part 7 of the long series, which will be Mass Effect the entire, or literally just doing the entire series. So yeah, it's going to be a long series. Last episode, we saved the Ara to Sony. We have a scientist. Yes, on Commander. Board. Not is sure there she something has you need? Anything. Yeah, she has none. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Um, in this episode, we're going to be doing some side quests. Maybe we'll do a main mission, but we'll see, depending on what time I got. I'm trying to keep these episodes to only 50, 55 minutes. Commander. And plus. Are you coming to check up on me? PlayStation doesn't. Well, the recording software doesn't allow um, me to edit um, clips longer, or I should I say, get a clip that's longer than 60 minutes, so until I can get my computer back, these episodes aren't going to be longer than an hour, so that we've got to deal with it. Uh, yeah. You, you look right? much better. How are but you feeling? Right now we're going to talk to Dr. Chalkmas assures me I am going to be fine. Squad I was impressed with her and, knowledge of Asari you know, physiology. Get to know him. You're in good hands. Dr. Chakwas knows what she's doing. I never properly thanked you for saving me from the Geth Commander. If you hadn't shown up, I... I had to save you. You can help me stop Saren. I know you took a chance bringing me aboard this ship. I have seen the way your crew looks at me. They do not trust me. But I am not like Benezia. I will do whatever I can to help you stop Saren. I promise. Oh no. Don't worry, I can Niara. trust her. I trust you. I know you won't let me down. It means a lot to hear you say that, Commander. Thank you. Tell me about yourself, Liara. Me? I am afraid I am not very interesting, Commander. I spend most of my time on remote digs, unearthing mundane items buried in long-forgotten Prothean ruins. Sounds boring. Yeah, you're right. That doesn't sound very interesting. On occasion, I have run afoul of indigenous life forms or stumbled across small bands of privateers. That probably does not seem very exciting to someone like you. I guess seeking out history's lost secrets holds a special appeal for me. I would give a century of my life to discover a beacon like the one you found on Eden Prime. You were actually touched by working Prothean technology. That is why I find you so fascinating, Commander. Uh, don't try and study I'm me. not some artifact you can take back to your lab, Doctor. I... I am sorry, Commander. I did not mean it like that. I... I just... I am used to dealing with computers and data disks. I am not very good with people. I can I tell. I let my professional curiosity get the better of me. Please forgive me. Let us talk about something else. Do you know why Benezia joined up with Saren? I don't understand it. She was always outspoken about the need for the Asari to become more involved in shaping galactic events. Maybe she thought allying herself with Saren would somehow be for the greater good in the long run. At least I hope so. Sound troubled. This hurts you, doesn't it? None of this makes any sense to me. I have not spoken to Benezia in many years, but I know her. And this was not like her. Something changed. I'd like to know more about the Asari. We were the I first well. species to discover the Citadel. We were instrumental in forming the Council, and we always strive to be the voice of peaceful cooperation in galactic disputes. My people believe we are all part of a single galactic community. Each species contributes something to the greater whole. Although we seek to understand other species, it seems few of them seek to understand us. The galaxy is filled with rumors and misinformation about my people. Like what? Most of the inaccuracies are centered around our mating rituals. My species is monogendered. Male and female have no real meaning for us. We still require a partner to reproduce. This second parent, however, may be of any species and any gender. How's that possible? I don't understand. Your species can mate with anyone? Mating is not quite the proper term, not as you understand it. Physical contact may or may not be involved, but it is not an essential element of the union. The true connection is mental. Our physiology allows us to meld with other beings. We can touch the very depths of their minds. We Sounds explore hot. the genetic memory of their species. We share the most basic elements of their individual and racial identities. We then pass these traits on to our daughters. It is how we learn to grow as a species and how we develop a greater understanding of other races. 
What about the other parent? What happens to your partner after the union? Every relationship is different. Some unions are a single encounter with both parents parting ways afterwards. Others can be more long term. Sometimes an Asari and her partner will stay together for many decades. So, who was your second parent? Do you know who Matriarch Benezia chose as her partner? She rarely spoke of her partner. Though I know my father, if you want to use that term, was another Asari. I say you're... you're, uh, a pure Asari. There's no mix. Benezia never told you her partner's name? Union with our own kind is no longer common. Really? Not for the purposes of reproduction. Most Asari believe it weakens our species. Asari daughters inherit racial traits from the father species. If both parents are Asari, then nothing has been gained, or so conventional wisdom would hold. I am what is sometimes called a pure blood, though no Asari would ever Harry be cruel Potter. enough to say the word to my face. It is a great insult among my people. It is possible Venezia's partner was of, embarrassed you know. by their union. She may have been too ashamed to publicly acknowledge me as her offspring. So, anybody who's pure blood, you're basically racist against people who don't have other species of blood in them. Okay, that's kind of messed up. Why agree to the Union if she didn't want any children? I cannot answer that. This is all speculation on my part. It is possible she wanted to be part of my life, but something happened to her before she had the chance. Benezia never spoke of her partner. Whatever happened, it caused her too much pain to dwell on it. She raised me by herself, though that is not uncommon. Many Asari raise their children alone, particularly if the father species is short-lived. Often the partner will pass on long before the child reaches maturity. How do you deal with that? You Asari live for a thousand years. What happens when your partner dies? A few sapient species live as long as my kind. We have learned to take a philosophical approach to our unions. We do not focus on the inevitable loss of our partners. Instead, we enjoy the time we spend with them. And even after they're gone, a part of them lives on in us. The union is a connection that transcends both time and space. Okay. I should go. Goodbye, Shepard. I learned a little bit more about the Asari culture. And more about Liara. And as far as romancing goes in this game, we're not going to be romancing anybody because, well, I don't, yeah, you can't romance Garrus in this, so, kind of sucks. There's only three potential people you can romance, Ashley, Caden, and Liara. Alright, down we go. So, we've got Saren on the run. Oh yeah. It won't be long now. Saren's good, but I'm better. Good? He's rotten. To the core. I could tell as soon as I met him. You Saren? Why didn't you tell me this sooner? I would've if I thought it was important. Keep talking. I'll decide what's important. Now tell me how you know Saren. This was a while ago. A bunch of mercs were bragging about a job out near the edges of the Terminus systems. They said it paid well and the boss was never around to ride them. They said he was looking for more men, too. So I checked it out. I didn't know Saren was openly recruiting mercs. It wasn't that open, and he only showed his face once. We'd been raiding ships in the area for months when we took out this massive cargo freighter. Our biggest haul yet. I was on board checking bodies for valuables, looking for some extra credits. That's when I saw him. What did Saren want with the ship? I don't know what he wanted. He was just moving through the ship, watching. 
Couple of the mercs called him by name, but he never spoke to them. Never spoke to anyone. I had a really bad feeling about him, so I got the hell out. Didn't even wait to get paid. Very, very smart man. What kind of cargo was the freighter carrying? What was Saren after? I don't know. All I saw on that ship was food and medical supplies. There were some basic weapons, but nothing big. If there was anything of value on that ship, I didn't see it. That's why I didn't mention it sooner. Whose ship was it? It was a Volus trading vessel. Big one. Lots of guards. But they were no match for us. That's the only time you saw him? Yeah. Didn't even know who he was. Still wouldn't if I hadn't joined up with you. But my instincts were right. Every other merc on that mission turned up dead within a week. Every damn one. Jesus. So long, Rex. Shepard. All right. Commander. Good talk. What's your opinion of the last mission? Not sure I buy Dr. Tassoni's story about her and her mom not talking. They're family, right? Might not matter. Not everyone has a happy family life. No, I guess not. Too bad those ruins got destroyed. I mean, they lasted thousands of years. That's impressive. Do you have a few minutes to talk? One on one? Sure. I, I was hoping to get a minute of your time off the record. Yeah, of course. I keep an open door policy. If you have any concerns, lay them on me. All right. I, I know things are different aboard the Normandy, but uh, I'm I'm concerned about the aliens, Vicarian and Rex. With all due respect, Commander, should they have full access to the ship? Because they're aliens. You don't trust their motives because they're not human. This Racist. is the most advanced ship in the Alliance Navy. I don't think we should give them free reign to poke around the vital systems. Engines, sensors, weapons. You don't trust aliens? You don't trust the Alliance's allies? I'm not sure I'd call the Council races allies. Damn. We... humanity, I mean, have to learn to rely on ourselves. Mind your words. I trust that's not insubordination, I hear. No, ma'am. That's patriotism. As noble as the council members seem now, patriotism if their backs are racist. against the wall, they'll what? abandon us. Excuse me, woman. You got a pessimistic view of the universe, Williams. A pessimist, pessimist is what an optimist calls a realist. Look, if you're fighting a bear and the only way for you to survive is to sick your dog on it and run, you'll do it. As much as you love your dog, it isn't human. It's not racism, the not fuck? really. No, Members it is of racism. Their species will always be more important to them than humans are. I mean, true, that makes sense. But, like, you're literally just calling aliens dogs. Not cool. These seem like deeply held beliefs, Williams. What made you think this way? My family's defended the Alliance since it was founded. My father, grandfather, great-grandmother, they all picked up a rifle and swore the oath of service. Okay. I guess we just tend to think of Earth's interests as our own. It doesn't sound like you've worked with aliens before. No, ma'am. Mainly I've been groundside, part of the surface garrison forces. I did get a rotation on a space station for training. Every Marine a rifleman, every rifleman ZG certified. Guess you make a habit of second-guessing your superiors. I... no, ma'am. I never knew my family. Grew up an orphan on Earth. Anybody in your family I'd have heard of? Couldn't say, Commander. So why are you out here? Just trying to get away from Earth? Yeah, for the action. I'm here to put hypervelocity rounds through the heads of bad guys. Most satisfying part of the job, Commander. Hell yeah. I understand, but you need to just shut up. All right, shut I can up. see where your concerns are coming from, Williams, but this is a multilateral mission. You're gonna have to work with aliens, like it or not. 
It won't be a problem, Commander. You say jump, I say how high. You tell me to kiss a Turian, I'll ask which cheek. Remember that. I'm glad there won't be a problem. Anything else you need, Commander? Dismissed, Chief. Ma'am? Commander, how are you? Why did you want to be a C-Sec officer in the first place? Hmm, that's a good question. There were several reasons, I guess. Such as? Like what? Probably the same as most officers. I wanted to fight injustice, wanted to help people. I guess my father had something to do with it, too. He was C-Sec, one of the best. I grew up hearing about his accomplishments or seeing his picture on the vids after a big arrest. He's taking my resignation pretty hard. Why? He's not impressed that you're going after Saren? My father's a C-Sec man to the bone. Do things right or don't do them at all, he says. He thinks I'm being too rash, too impatient. He's worried I'll become just like Saren. He actually talked me out of becoming a Spectre when I was younger, for the same reasons. No kidding. You were asked to be a Spectre? Well, I was targeted as a possible Spectre candidate. Me and about a thousand other Turian military recruits. I could have received special training, but my father didn't like it. He despises the Spectres. He hates the idea of someone having unlimited power with no accountability. He wouldn't like you, Commander. No offense. Typical. Spoken like a true CSEC officer. Yeah, it's a speech I've heard one too many times. But Saren's not gonna play by our rules, CSEC's rules. If you want to nail Saren, you need to send someone who isn't restricted by policies and procedures. Exactly. You're a quick learner, Garrus. We'll beat him at his own game. It's the only way to stop someone like him. I'm right behind you, Commander. I'd love for you to be behind me. Uh, what? Dialogues is just as if you're just talking a little bit quiet. I don't think something I can do for you, Commander. Yeah, he has not. Carry on, Adams. Aye, aye, Commander. Oh, hello, Shepard. Are you okay? I don't know. Your ship is amazing, and your crew's been really great to me, especially your chief engineer. But I just sort of feel out of place. The Normandy runs so smooth, it feels like we're not even moving, and the engines are so quiet. How do you sleep at night? Too quiet to sleep? The silence wakes you up? Back on the flotilla, the last thing you want to hear is silence. It means an engine's died or an air filter shut down. I guess you don't have to worry about that here. But old habits die hard. But it's more than just a silence. This ship feels so empty. It's like half the crew is missing. Back home, I couldn't wait to go on my pilgrimage. I couldn't wait to get away from the crowds. Now that I'm out here, I kind of miss them. Maybe that's the point of the pilgrimage. Sounds like the pilgrimage isn't just about finding resources for the fleet. Maybe it's about teaching you to appreciate your people and culture. You're probably right. We Quarians spend our whole lives traveling. But really, we never leave home. The pilgrimage has given me a whole new perspective on our culture. You know, there's always a few who go on their pilgrimages and never return. I always assumed something bad happened to them. But maybe they just wanted a different life. You're going back, right? You do plan to return to the migrant fleet, right? I could never abandon my people, Shepard. I will go back eventually. But we have to stop Saren first. Otherwise, I might not have a home to go back to. I should go. See you later. Alright, so I think that's everybody to talk to for now. Now we're just gonna start scouring the universe for supplies and 
places to land, doing missions, stuff like that. Oh, I saw that. Nope, okay, I saw that. Give me that. Gotta get those codex for that XP. Alright. Let's go to Sparta. Message coming in. Patching it through. Commander Shepard, my name is Nasana Dantius. I have a job for you. I can't say any more in an unsecured communication. If you're interested in hearing my offer, meet me on the Citadel so we can talk in person. I'll be waiting in the Diplomat's Lounge on the Presidium. Okay. So I guess we're going to the Citadel. After I search some of these planets, because there might be something. Anything on the asteroid, though? Yep. Commander, I'm picking up a signal from the planet's surface. It looks like an automated distress beacon. Okay, so we'll land on that in a moment. We'll do this mission, and then we will go back to the Citadel and talk to this woman who wants to speak to us. We're gonna be using Tali for a lot of this stuff. Her ability to hack and um, get through decrypted blockers and stuff is going to be very helpful. soldiers. Looks like they were lured here by the distress beacon. No. Let me destroy this thing so I can use that more on her ass. Uh, which button does it? Is it square? Yeah. Couldn't remember which button it was. So, back to the citadel. 
So you gotta speak to a few people there. Now remember, Artemis Tower, I gotta go back there. So we're not done there, we're not done with that. Liara and her not. No, so should I say Liara? I said Tali. Tali Equalizing and interior pressure with exterior atmosphere. I think my brain just Logged. had a freaking The really commanding strong. officer is ashore. Ex literally think I think it just literally had a mini stroke there. Um, combat armor. Want him wearing heavy armor, of course. Uh, give him more warp. Be able to use throw. Alright. There we go. So Presley has the deck. Rear Admiral Mihailovic, 5th Fleet. I kind of just want to say it. Admiral, I'm on urgent business with the Citadel. Is there something you need? Let's get one thing clear, Shepard. You might be a specter to the aliens, but to me, you're just another junior officer. Be respectful. I command the 63rd Scout Flotilla. You and the Normandy were slated for my unit after shakedown. And the Council got their paws, claws, tentacles, whatever. They got them on our ship, and you. I wasn't keen on it either, but there are advantages to being above the law. Don't let the title go to your head. No one's above the law. I don't begrudge the politician's decision to but throw you, you to the know, Council. It's an opportunity. I do begrudge this over-designed piece of tin, though. Don't insult my ship. This ship has saved our lives a dozen times over. An exaggeration. I've read your reports. This experiment diverted my billions ass. from our appropriations bills. For the same price, we could have had a heavy cruiser. But no, we had to make nice to the Turians, throw money at a co developed boondoggle. Oh I'm here God. to make an inspection, Commander. Normandy is an Alliance warship. I intend to see she's up to snuff. She is. I'm sure you'll find everything in order, Admiral. I'll just bet. Wait here. I won't be long. Commander, I'm not happy. I bet you are. Sounds like a fairly common situation. Commander, I suggest you secure your mouth. It's going to get you in trouble. Oh, is it? Who designed that CIC? Putting the commander after everyone else is inefficient. What if he needs to discuss with the operators toward the bow? There are no amateurs on this crew. They know to keep idle chatter minimized during combat. And I can bellow with the best DIs. A fair point. I suppose the design has no chance of becoming standard. No need to worry about a generation of recruits learning things bass backwards. I had to shake my head at that drive core of yours. 120 billion credits of element zero to make this thing able to move without giving itself away. You realize we could make drive cores for 12,000 fighters with that money? What good is it to hide for a few hours anyway? Useless. Do you read history? Men yeah. of limited vision said the same thing about early aircraft, submarines, and tanks. There's two ways I could take that, Commander, but that is true. I suppose the early U-boats weren't much better. And we need to talk about your crew, Commander. Krogan? 
A sorry? We got a problem, my crew. Turians? What are you thinking, Commander? You can't allow alien nationals free access to Alliance equipment. My choice, motherfucker. I'm Normandy's commanding officer. The regs state I have the authority to say who does and doesn't come aboard. Yeah, if you I disagree, the copy, send no. a complaint of the chain of command. Sophistry, Commander. You know I'm right. You want them on board that bad? Fine. Don't quote regs at me. You have anything else to say, Commander? Any other justifications for the state of this vessel? Oh, come on. I want to say it. We need to kick ass. Come on. Let me, let me, let me. None, sir. Very well. I don't agree with any of this, but your reasons seem sound. I'll be submitting a report to the Joint Military Council. It will not be as negative as I planned. Good hunting, Commander Shepard. Make us proud. You're just looking for a, a reason to pitch and complain, aren't you? Yeah. In breaking news, you Chairman Burns of the Parliament huh. Subcommittee on Transhuman Studies has been kidnapped by biotic extremists. The biotics commandeered a freighter and were last seen in the Hades Gamma Cluster. No demands have yet been made. Is that a quest? It's gotta be a quest, right? Oh, God, not this woman. Commander, Kalisa bin seen in Al-Jalani, Westernland News. Would you answer a few questions for our viewers? Oh, right. I'm not in the mood, Miss Al-Jalani. People back home have heard a lot of wild stories about you, Commander. I can give you the chance to set the record straight. What do you say? So long as you understand that I may not be able to answer all questions. I'm sure our viewers will understand. For now. Humans have been trying to get the respect of the galactic community for 26 years. With that in mind, what are your feelings on being the first human specter? It's overdue. We all know it should have happened years ago. I hope the council realizes that we won't sit at the kids' table forever. Some believe that without firm action on our part, the council will continue to treat us like poor relations. Have you encountered any situations where the Citadel asked you to place its needs before the needs of Earth? They know better. I think they know not to ask me to work against my own people. I think our viewers will be glad to hear that, Commander. You've been given command of an advanced human warship for your missions. Is there anything you'd like to say about it? The Normandy is a triumph of human engineering. Like our development of fighter carriers, it shows other races that we're able to think outside the box. That's gratifying. Many defeatist officers claim that the Alliance can't compete with the naval power of, say, the Turians. Do you think it was appropriate to hand Earth's most advanced warship over to the Citadel? Miss Algelani, I wear the Alliance uniform, and if you think anyone other than me says where the Normandy can go, you're sadly mistaken. No offense intended, Commander. I'm sure you have to follow the orders of your superiors. Of course, now your superiors are aliens. Is everybody racist? One last question, Commander. Rumors back home say you're tracking a rogue specter named Saren. Do you have any comment on that? Honestly, I think it's best that people don't know right now. But, you know what? Screw it. He was behind Eden Prime. Saren instigated the attack on our colony at Eden Prime. Once his involvement was proven to the Council, I was assigned to bring him in. That's surprising, Commander. The official line says Eden Prime was attacked by rogue synthetics. It was. Good luck in your mission. It Thank was. you for your time, Commander Shepard. But well, that's not going to go over well with the council. <laughs> but I don't care about them. Oh, I never talked to this requisition officer over here. Now that I became a specter, I forgot to introduce myself. One sec, looking you up. Hello, Commander. Show me what you've got. Sounds good. Just let me set you up. Well, this must be a mistake. Uh, what? System's telling me to offer you our select stock. Spectre? Well, I heard about that, but I didn't realize it was you. Sorry, Commander. No Just show me what you've got. I'll open the rare stocks for you, Commander. Enjoy. Okay. 
rare stocks, rare stocks. Uh, I can only do light armor for me. I need better armor. Thinking about the onyx armor, honestly. It's good shit. It's got better shields. That's heavy armor. I can't do heavy armor, though. I guess we're doing the light armor. Oh, well. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Any things I could do? A bionic amp, that would work. Yes. Give me that license. Oh, I don't want to open fire. Uh, but it, we want my armor on. Yes. Bam. Awesome. Okay. I gotta remember to go to him every now and then for upgraded armor. Now, who wanted to see me? Someone wanted to see me. At the Embassy Lounge. Okay, I know where to go. Celebrations are being planned for the anniversary of the end of the Rachni Wars. Many council worlds, particularly Asari and Solarian colonies, will hold victory parades to commemorate the defeat of the invading Rachni. In a rare admission of debt, several Asari colonies have invited Krogans to be honored for the victories the uplifted Krogans made possible. That is always just so jumpy. It's cute. Commander Shepard, I am Nasana Dantius. Yeah. I see you got my message. Get to the point. You said you had a job offer. I do. My sister Dahlia is a crewman on the cargo vessel operating out beyond the fringes of the Traverse. Her ship was attacked by privateers. There were no reported survivors. Now you want revenge? You want me to hunt down the people who killed her? This is where it gets complicated. Last week, I received a message with her voice on it. Dahlia is alive. The rest of the crew was killed, but she was taken prisoner. The slavers demanded a huge ransom from me in exchange for returning her unharmed. Why didn't the raiders kill Dahlia along with everyone else? My sister probably told them who she was. My family's very wealthy, Shepard. They must have realized she was worth more to them alive. You can't negotiate with criminals. No, it's too can't. late. I transferred the funds to the account they specified, only they never released her. They haven't contacted me since. I've made a terrible mistake, Shepard. I'm a diplomatic emissary. By law, I'm required to report any attempted extortion to CSEC immediately. So but why have I was afraid for Dahlia, so I just paid the ransom. Now she's still missing. And if anyone finds out what I did, I could end up in jail. So I have to fix your mess. You got in over your head and you expect me to pull you out? This is easy money for you, Shepard. I've already found her. You just need to bring her back. I tracked the ransom payment through several accounts. Eventually, it led to a small mercenary band operating out of the Artemis Tau Cluster. I need you to go to the Merc base, take them out, and bring my sister back. You shall be well rewarded. Anything you can I tell me about the Mercs who have your sister? Pretty much what you'd expect. Rough, dangerous, and well-armed. Nothing a Spectre cannot handle, though. Damn straight. Can't you hire someone else to do this? I do not want to take chances with my sister's life. I need a Spectre. Besides, you operate outside official channels. My superiors cannot find out I never reported the ransom in the first place. How'd you find out who was behind the ransom? I have resources. Contacts and credits can go a long way. Especially if you're willing to bend the rules. I already broke the law when I paid the ransom. This couldn't make things any worse. I'll do it. Don't worry. 
I'll bring your sister back. Thank you, Shepard. I knew you were the right woman for the job. Come back and see me when the job is done. I mean, I'm getting paid to do it, so might as well. Hey, barman. Hello, Commander. Can I get you something? You know who I am? Your arrival uh, created a bigger-than-average stir among the diplomats and hangers-on around here. There's always something new happening around here. I could fill you in on some points of interest if you'd like. Why are you... you're moving your hand around, but there, there's no rag. Are you just feeling the counter? What's going on around here? Well, you found the embassy. There's like, not much dude, going on here. you don't have here. a rag, what are you... Across the bridge, you'll find you the bank, the, the emporium, and Shiera's. If you haven't heard of her, you soon will. Bro, you if you need supplies, you can try the markets one level below. For entertainment, I'd try Flux or Cora's Den. Okay. Goodbye. You have fun. So long, Commander. Have a pleasant day. Yeah, and you have fun rubbing that counter. I don't get it. This place seems strange. I wish there were more humans around. Racist. So they finally did it. I knew one of your kind would make Spectre one day. I only hope you're better than the one they're sending you after. Damn right. I'll do whatever it takes to stop Saren. Hmm. That's what worries me. Was there something you wanted? I'll be going now. Goodbye, Commander. Uh, I don't want to talk to... My counselor, the al the alliance counselor, or chairman, or whatever you want to call him. This man never talked to. I him heard what happened under the Artemis Tau cluster. The council wasn't too happy about the destruction of those Prothean ruins. Screw what they think. This isn't a game, Ambassador. Shepard's out there trying to stop Saren from destroying the galaxy. I know. I know. Just try to be a little more careful. The Council's watching you, and we all get judged on how you behave. Uh, get stuffed. Yes, Commander? Well, I should go. I'll be here if you need anything. I was here to talk to Udina, but, you know, get to learn more about Udina, but, you know, kind of just pieced out. Oh, yeah, I gotta go talk to, um... What's his name? Uh, Kahuku. Kohaku, yes. So, to the Presidium. Well, the Count, the Citadel Tower. To be more specific. Commander. Hello again, Commander. I've got a proposition for you. Since you helped me get information on the crime syndicate, I've gotten a lot more backing from my publishers. I'm investigating traffic controller conditions now, and I wondered if you could help. <laughs> no, goodbye. What do you want me to do? I've heard rumors that the space traffic controllers are overworked to a dangerous degree. I can't get into the control room, but you could. If you planted a bug inside, I could crack the story. If you crack this story, what's likely to happen? Ideally, there will be calls to improve working conditions by hiring more controllers and upgrading systems. The Council won't pay for improvements voluntarily. This story will provide that pressure. What will this bug allow you to pick up? Just audio and video. I'm not trying to tap into the traffic control system if that's what you're worried about. I just need to hear and see them in order to correlate their activity with traffic efficiency. Everyone knows space traffic controllers are overworked. How is this news? There's a difference between overworked and dangerous. Traffic at the Citadel has increased by 300% in the last century, but traffic controller resources haven't kept up. We already have several last-minute wave-offs per week. <laughs> Do we have to wait for a full-blown disaster? Uh, sure. This bug you want me to plant, could it interfere with traffic signals? Absolutely not. I made certain that the frequencies it uses won't interfere with anything. I'll try. I can't promise anything, but I'll see what I can do. 
Give me the bug. Excellent. Just place it on a terminal with a good view of the area. Thanks again for your help. In the long run, this story is going to save lives. Is it? No, I'm... Commander, any word on my missing men? They're dead. I found them. Well, what was left of them. They ran into a Thresher Maw. A Thresher Maw? That's not... My men wouldn't just stumble into a Thresher Nest. Not the entire unit. Somebody lured them there with an Alliance Distress Beacon. Placed it perfectly so they'd land right beside the Thresher Nest. Damn it. I had a bad feeling about this ever since my team disappeared. An Alliance Beacon used as bait. My unit wiped out. And nobody seems to know anything about it. Commander, I appreciate what you did. Now I need to do my part. The families of those Marines deserve to know why they died. I hope you find what you're after, Admiral. I will, Shepard. I'll let you know when I find anything out. Any renegade points? Aw. I should have said not my problem. Alright, I'm trying to see if there's any people I gotta talk to. I... Did I talk to this guy? I really appreciate what yeah, you're doing for me. I talked to him. Please let me know as soon as you find any information on my brother. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember. What? Let's go to Ward's access. This guy's still talking about the Enkindlers. Yep, still talking about the Enkindlers. Oh, hail the Enkindlers. Herald their glory. Man, it's crazy. Because I know there's quite a few quests that popped up. I, I'm telling you, this is not what Jake would want. I don't care what you think, Michael. It's my decision. Damn. I, I know you're thing. hurting, Rebecca, but don't let your grief hurt your baby, too. Is this man harassing you, ma'am? <sighs> Perhaps you can talk some sense into her. I don't need anyone to talk sense into me, Michael. I'm not undergoing the treatments. <sighs> My sister-in-law here is pregnant, and she's refused to let the baby undergo gene therapy in utero. Why? I thought gene therapy was common. My husband Jacob died from a rare heart condition several months ago. There's a chance that the baby could develop the same heart condition, but routine gene therapy can eliminate it. A very small chance, Michael. And extranet reports say the therapy could harm the child. It's less dangerous than the genetic enhancements that every soldier in the Alliance receives. What are the chances that your child will develop the heart condition? According to the doctors, there's a 1 in 50 chance. And if my baby develops the condition, medical treatments are available which are nowhere near as effective as simply getting the gene therapy. What are the chances that gene therapy could hurt the baby? One in 300 at most. But extranet articles say there could still be long-term complications we don't know about. Don't you understand? If my baby is that one in 300, I will always wonder if I... if, if I killed my baby for nothing. Yeah, no, let her choose, dude. It's her body. It's Rebecca's child, Michael. I think you should honor her decision. Damn it, she's not choosing. She's acting blindly out of grief. You're not helping. Of course she is. So are you. Yelling at her will not bring your brother back. How dare you? I'm trying to do what's best for the baby. You're afraid you'll lose the baby just like you lost your brother. This baby is the only thing my brother... It's all I have left of him. I need to know that the baby's safe. It's all I have left too, Michael. I just want Jacob's child to be safe. I want to give him that much. We will. I promise. Thank you for talking with us. I appreciate it. 
No problem. Renegade. But uh, we ran out of time for this episode. If you enjoyed this episode, please smash that like button and remember to comment and subscribe. If you want to get, I mean, yeah, remember to comment and subscribe if you want to get you know notifications when I do make more. Um, I'll, I'll hit the bell, of course. Again, I'm stuck at this outer thing. I'll get better. I hope. But um, I do stream current. I do stream on Twitch. So if you want to see me playing video games live, be sure to visit me there. Link in the description. I stream Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and Saturdays at 8 p.m. So hope to see you there. Also. There's a link to my Twitter. If you want to know what I'm doing, I do post regularly on Twitter. Link is also in the description. And I will see you guys in the next episode. As always, have a great day, great night. Stay beautiful, my friends.